Holy Spirit, you are here, and we beg you just to take over, if, and you've already taken over, and we, I'm so glad that Sarah is willing to let you lead, and so many people in this church are willing to let you lead them, and I am willing to let you lead me, Holy Spirit. I say yes to whatever it is you want to do today. I know how you've prepared my heart and my mind this is for you. So I want to pray right now in the name of Yeshua, the healer, Jesus, the one who by his stripes we are healed. I want to pray healing over Sheila Cantarudi right now in the name of Jesus. Not delayed healing, not a long process of healing, but the kind of healing that Jesus brings, which can be instantaneous. And I pray for that kind of healing on her today. She's not here, but she doesn't need to be here because the Holy Spirit that is here is also there with her. And so, Holy Spirit, you reach out and you touch her and you heal her. We ask this so that you will be glorified because you're good and you're kind and you're gracious and you're miraculous. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. And God, I want to pray for my sister Elizabeth, um, who's getting ready to go and, and uh, having a, a wonderful adventure, and she's not going to be here. God, I pray that you would, you would already be forming relationships and friendships and, and Christian sisters and brothers who could come alongside of her and would bless her uh, in her time in, in Orlando. And, and God, I, just, I pray for every need in this room. You are a God who sees our need. You see needs we don't even know we've got, and you've already figured out how to meet those needs. I love the fact that I saw somebody say, don't worry about tomorrow. God's already been there. God, you are there. And you're yesterday. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray a blessing over every person in this room. We call on the mighty name, the name that is above every name, the name that is multiplied above every name, the name of Jesus. Do your will. We say yes to you. And we pray this in your name. Amen. The kids are going back. Amen, amen. Thank you. It's good to have an amen section over there. I actually got one of the juice-free uh, cups. It was actually completely clear, and I thought, well, this is the Holy Spirit saying, ha, ah, there you go. So um, anyways, hey, I'm glad you guys are here, and what a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Sally and Julia are uh, in Pigeon Forge. They've already made it. And uh, just we pray for them to have a great time and, and really get power, powerfully impacted by that uh, worship service today and, um, and safely home and that I will remember to text her the scores at uh, in particular times. Now let me say something. Today at uh, 2.05, there are two teams that some of us are actually interested in this, two teams that are coming together. Now if I, on the count of three, I want you to tell me what you think the number one weapon of the Tennessee Titans is on three. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Referees. Thank you. <laughs> Derek Henry. Anybody believe that Derek Henry is the number one weapon? That the, the, so do you think the Kansas City Chiefs have done everything they can do this week to go against our number one weapon? Yes. Do you think the enemy, and I'm talking about the big D, the big S, Satan, do you think he comes with plans to, to, to derail your biggest strength? Yes. Here's how I know that. Well, number one, I know it from my own experience, but I also know it from my daughter, Sarah, who is high on faith. Matter of fact, I think faith is her number one gift. And this week, he has pushed at her and pushed at her and pushed at her to the point she didn't want to be here this morning and lead worship because she felt like, I'm not sure I can do that. And so when you have a spiritual gift, the enemy will come against it and try to make you not want to use your spiritual gift. Man, I, you know what? Every time I do this... The enemy comes after me. Well, the good news is, apparently you're bothering him. And I love to bother the enemy. Amen. Okay? So, remember, the gates of hell will not stand against the church. 
We push back the gates of hell. We don't, you know, when I was a little kid, we go by the cemetery. Oh, you want to climb the fence? No, I don't, I don't You want to touch the fence? No. You want to get on the grass? No. I want to stay as far away from that fence as I can because there's dead people on the other side. It's scary. The gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of hell literally means the plans of hell. The, the, the plans of the enemy cannot stand against the church. Because we have the Holy Spirit. We have, we have the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he is our captain. And if he says kick a door down, we kick a door down, right? Hi. So uh, I want to show you guys one of my all-time favorite Father's Day gifts. Matter of fact, it's such a favorite gift, I keep it in a paper bag. It's such a favorite gift, I keep tape on it so that no one else will get into my favorite gift I've ever gotten as a father. You want to see it? How many of y'all think you know what it is? It's my mother's favorite machete. That's a Nacho Libre in case you don't know. So I, this is like my, my favorite gift of all time. How can you tell this is my favorite gift of all time? I just never used it. <laughs> Could you say maybe that this may not actually be my favorite gift of all time because it's still in the pristine wrapping. It's never been opened. It's been hidden in my closet so that nobody can get to my gift. Church, when God gives you gifts, he means for you to, to rip them open and use them. Well, I'm, I'm saving it for later. Stop saving it for later. It was given to you for now. Uh, so let me clear, clear this up because I don't want to be the guy who lied to you. This was actually a gift I went and bought Thomas because the gift I actually bought Thomas, apparently China has moved to another uh, time zone. And, uh, you know, some of you did the same thing. You're still getting Christmas gifts that you ordered on Black Friday. So this was actually just, uh, uh, Keenan, you might be getting this for your birthday. Just, <laughs> just saying. Just saying. So... Just as I was thinking this morning, the Lord was saying, man, just show people, remind people, look, when you get a gift from the Holy Spirit, he wants you to, man, just tear into it. So, how many of y'all are the pull the bow off and then, you know, you know, pull like you're going to save the paper? No, Bill, what do we do? You know, that's what he wants us to do with our spiritual gifts. And everybody in this room has a spiritual gift. Today, we're talking about the spiritual gift of faith. Now, uh, I, just, I just had to do this. Every time I say faith, I hear George Magalhães. You got to have faith, faith, faith. I was going to play the video, but then I realized it's pretty raunchy for uh, the 70s, so I decided not to play that video. But you got to have faith, faith, faith. But we all know that all of us have. How many of y'all have faith? All of us have faith. I had faith pulling in here. I had faith that some of y'all would show up. I had faith that some of y'all wouldn't show up. I have faith. Every day we have faith. We have faith our car's going to start. We have faith that we can get from point A to point B. Everybody has some faith. And then there's saving faith, which all of you have. But we're talking about a supernatural kind of faith. So I want us to kind of look at this, and uh, we're going to have a great time. So um, everyone has faith. Romans 12, 3. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So God has allotted each, everyone, everybody has a little bit of faith, a measure of faith. Then in Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 and 9, it says, for gra by grace... You have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of your work, so that no man could boast. So there is saving faith. If you have had the ability to say yes to Jesus, it's because you were given a saving faith. Um, you know, hey, can you explain why you believe that Jesus is the Lord? Because I have faith. Can you explain to me why you believe that God is the creator of all things? Because I have faith. I have faith. You have faith. If you are counted among the Christians, you have the saving faith. But this isn't the kind of faith that we're talking about today that, that we find in, uh, in, 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 our, in our verse. So um, let me see here. So here's what faith is. Faith, 
Faith is the gift of faith, is the divine strength, trust, and ability to believe God for unseen supernatural results in every arena of life. Now, some, we have, okay, this is our third highest one. So I'm glad to know that I'm a pastor of people who are full of faith, and not just everyday faith, and not just saving faith, but supernatural faith, which means what? How kind of, think of some things real quick in the scriptures. There's mountain moving faith. There's, there's all kinds of, we're going we're gonna to look at some Old and New Testament examples of faith um, as we go. So the Holy Spirit's gift of faith, as found in 1 Corinthians 12, is different than common faith, is different than saving faith. The word for faith in the New Testament is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, pistis. It carries the notion of confidence, certainty, trust, and assurance in the object of faith. Those with the gift have a trust and confidence in God that allows them to live boldly for him and manifest that faith in mighty ways. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out by, in, in both Romans 4 and in Hebrews 11, it talks about Abraham. Abraham, his, uh, his obedience was counted to him as righteousness. His faith was counted to him as righteousness. Now, let's go ahead and just say this. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit came in power and in full in the book of Acts. But guess what? The Holy Spirit wasn't lounging on a couch for that first 2,000 years. The Holy Spirit was constantly interacting with people. We saw Jesus would make, the, you know, sometimes when you read the, an angel appeared, it was actually Jesus in physical form. Or, or uh, when, when Abraham is sitting there and uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is about to be destroyed, that's literally Jesus is one of those that are, that are walking along with those two angels. It's, so there's times that we see Jesus before the New Testament. There's times that we see the Holy Spirit before the New Testament. And here are two examples of times where I believe the gift of faith was in complete and full operation. So the first one that we're going to talk about is, what is that picture? Anybody can, can anybody tell me which, what this might be? Abraham and Isaac. Okay. Uh, I, I decided to go with a picture where you couldn't see the little boy's face because I didn't want people to go, oh. That's so horrible. <laughs> Let me just go ahead. Let's, let's get this out of the way. For people who don't understand God, they'll go, how, can you, how could you love a God who would have somebody sacrifice their children? It's like, if you understood about God, you wouldn't ask that question. Because the fact of the matter is, he, he, was, he was testing Abraham's willingness to trust him. And, and you know, it, it, it's... We, so, you know, if you want to focus on the negative, there's always things to focus on. But we know that God, his intention was to bless Abraham with more descendants than he could ever count. So let's talk about Abraham. Again, I'm using him as, a, as a, an example of the supernatural faith that we're talking about. So first, Abraham leaves his country with no real plan of where he's going. Um, he follows God to wherever. Uh, then he believed God that he and Sarah would have a child in their old age. He believed that. And then the biggest test of all, he's been asked to sacrifice his only son, the link to that promise of descendants that were greater than the number of the, the sand on the, sh on the seashore. So let's look at Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2. Now, it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, in case you're wondering, <laughs> no, not Ishmael, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Now, the next two words to me are what show that Abraham had a supernatural amount of faith. The next two words are, so Abraham. Now, if God had said that to me, Mike, I want you to take Joseph, your son, your only son, who you love, and I want you to take him and I want you to sacrifice. My first words, the, the next two words would not have been, so Mike. It would have been, then Mike, 
ran like a dog. Then Mike began to go, God, we got to, you don't understand, God, there's, there's, he had supernatural faith because he just like, yes, Lord. 